What's up fellow bookworms and welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Dylan and we are going to finally talk about Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. So when I started this Harry Potter series, I expected to probably be able to read all seven books in maybe a month, like overly ambitious me thought a couple weeks max, but it has been um, longer than that for sure. But we're here. I actually did read the last book more recently than the tardiness of this video may lead you to believe. So I finished it like probably a couple weeks ago now, but after I finished the book, which I read in like two days, maybe three at the most, I wanted to watch the movie after I read the book. And then I remembered that it's actually movies because they split the book into two movies. And so it took forever to watch the first movie because they're like two hours long each, so I had to find like two spare hours to watch the movie, and then I had to do that again, find two more hours to watch the second part of the last movie, so uh, it just, yeah, it took a while, it was more involved, and then I finally watched the movies and just kept pushing it off, got busy, all that stuff, anyway, so we're going to talk about it, um, I have to say, just getting right into it, I absolutely loved and absolutely hated Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, uh, and then there were some parts where I felt like it was just kind of meh, you know, not not bad, not good, just kind of just kind of along for a ride, you know. So I guess we'll break it down into what did I like about it? What did I not like about it? But before we do that, of course, I'm going to give you the super brief plot summary because it's been so long, I don't actually remember a lot of what happened, so this is going to be pretty vague. But the very last book sets up with Harry being, of course, basically, uh, I forget what exactly it's called, but like, Most Wanted Wizard, uh, number one or whatever, that's not it. But he's the most wanted wizard in all of the world, I guess, uh, because the Ministry of Magic has been overrun by Death Eaters. Voldemort has basically come back in full force. Everyone in power has been corrupted or is on his side at this point. And so Harry, Ron, and Hermione have to go into hiding and they have to track down seven Horcruxes in order to kill Voldemort. And basically, that's going to make no sense if you aren't familiar with this story, but basically, Voldemort has managed to split his soul into all these different objects, and as long as those objects exist, then Voldemort is more or less immortal. I guess he is, immortal. Uh, and so we have to destroy all these Horcruxes before we can then destroy Voldemort. And so with that very brief kind of synopsis, if you could even call it that, in mind, what did I love about the story? What did I hate about the story? And what did I just kind of feel meh about the story? Starting with the meh part of the review, it felt like probably 200 pages of the story was just detailing a camping trip between Harry, Ron, and Hermione probably just Harry and Hermione for like half of it, uh, which was not bad. Again, it's meh, so it's not bad for sure, but it was kind of, um, I don't know, less than exciting. I felt like the story started really strong. I feel like the story ended pretty strong, but I do feel like there was kind of a lull in the middle where it was just like, all right, it's another day. We made no progress. All right, it's another day. Still no progress. All right, it's been a week. Nothing has happened. And it just kind of, you know, dragged on. It wasn't really 200 pages of just that, but a lot of it was just them in the woods hiding and trying to figure stuff out and really not being able to do it, which kind of takes me into another part of the review. I didn't even really remember this when I was kind of going over what I wanted to say, but none of the story really takes place in Hogwarts, except for at the very end, they finally meet up at Hogwarts, there's a big battle scene, all that stuff, which by the way, I'm going to assume that you are familiar with the story. If you're watching the video for book seven, you know, you made it this far, so there will be spoilers, uh, so just, you know, expect some of those, but we're at Hogwarts at the very end when there's the great showdown, but other than that, we're hogwarts -less. really, we're just looking at the main three characters of the story, Harry, Ron, and Hermione, for probably... 60 to 75 percent of the story I would say maybe a little less than that um and yeah it was just kind of not bad but not especially great in my opinion and then as always so we can end on a more positive note what did I hate about this story well honestly I guess that stuff I hated really is stuff I loved 
in kind of a weird way. But the main things I hated were just how sad it was. Uh, I hated how so many characters died. You know, uh, it was just sad. It was it was gut wrenching. So I hated it in the best way. But Dobby, you know, I mean, man, brought a tear to my eye when Dobby sacrificed himself. It was it was terrible. It was tragic. Um, and then, of course, George or Fred. I don't actually remember. But one of the twins also dies towards the end, which was very sad. Uh, you know, they weren't really like a main character, but they were one of my favorites. They were always there for, you know, with a good joke or something funny to say, which I always appreciated. And then, of course, Snape, you know, um, I always liked Snape from the beginning, even though he was always made out to be the villain. Uh, even having not read the books and knowing almost nothing about Harry Potter, I knew that Snape was the good guy, even though at the end of book six, I was very confused because I was like, Okay, I'm still pretty sure he's a good guy, but this doesn't really seem like good guy behavior. And then, you know, Snape meets his unfortunate end, and we learn a lot about him, and he has this whole terribly sad backstory, and he sacrificed himself for Harry, kind of. It was just uh, very sad. And so, yeah, I hated that, but I also loved it at the same time. And then what did I love about it? Well, I felt like this one was really unique in that it really did feel kind of like a quest, like almost like adventure quest type fantasy, which you could say that all the books have been kind of like that. There's always been kind of a mission, like we have to go talk to Hagrid and figure out what's going on, and then Hagrid is going to tell us something, which is going to send us over here to do this, which yes, they've all kind of been like that for sure. But this one is especially so because they were tracking down all these Horcruxes, going to these different places, coming up with different plans, and just all this adventure quest type stuff, I thought it was pretty good, and it was pretty interesting and kind of unique. I've said before that each book kind of has its own kind of vibe, you know, to put it into like 2023 vernacular. Uh, it's got its own unique sort of style and presence, I guess, if you will, and this one definitely had its own thing you know felt felt very distinct is what I'm trying to say and I guess part of that distinction excuse me part of that distinction was how it felt like a quest or an adventure type story which I thought was really cool of course uh goes without saying I loved the end but I guess also kind of to keep with the theme also really hated the end so I loved it because of you know everything came together Obviously, we knew it was going to happen, but Harry emerged victorious. The good guys win. Pretty much everybody lives happily ever after. Everybody that survived, which reminds me, another thing I hated was Mad-Eye Moody. Forgot about him, but uh, we lost him as well, which was pretty sad. But for the most part, happy ending. Everything has been solved. Basically, closed case on the Harry Potter, you know, universe, I guess, the wizarding world, um, where, you know, I don't think it would ever make sense for another Harry Potter book to come about because we got a perfectly kind of wrapped up story at the end. But at the same time, I hated it, and hate is way too strong of a word, but just to keep with the whole loved it and hated it thing going on here, I hated it because it's got to be impossible to end a series like Harry Potter. No matter what J.K. Rowling would have written, it would have never been good enough, you know, because how do you end a series like that? And so with the impossible task of drawing Harry Potter to a close, I thought she did very well. Uh, I don't know how she could have done any better, but, uh, you know, it's still always hard and never really feels like good (laughs) when such a monumental series ends like it's always bittersweet I feel like to see your favorite characters kind of fade into oblivion you know but I did I guess getting all the way to the very end of the story with the uh epilogue I did feel like I mean almost maybe it was open to like the possibility of more Harry Potter stories of course it's been like 14 years at this point I don't think anything like that is ever coming but I do like how you know we've got grown-up Harry we've got grown-up Ron and Hermione they're sending their kids off to Hogwarts so you know it felt very full circle which I liked it felt complete but also I guess open enough you know if I read this for the first time whatever 14 years ago when it came out I might have thought ooh there might be another Harry Potter book at some point in the future, maybe following their kids. But, you know, at this point, that seems very unlikely. I don't know. But, I don't know, I'm kind of rambling. What was I even talking about? (laughs) 
I guess it was complete, but not complete, but complete, if that makes sense. And I loved it and I hated it. So basically, this review makes no sense. Now, before I share my overall feelings on the entirety of the Harry Potter series, I do just want to mention quickly my thoughts on the movies, because uh, I felt like basically everything that I said about the book is kind of true about the movie, because unlike all the other books, the last book, Deathly Hallows, got turned into two movies, which I thought was kind of cool and also kind of not cool at the same time. So as far as the movies go, I thought they were pretty good. Kind of long naturally because you know there's like five and a half hours worth of stuff in them kind of dragged on a bit but still really good movies and again I mean you know everything I said about the book wrapped everything up really well I don't really remember anything that was inconsistent with the books or anything that was like blatantly off or did anything to hinder the story but again it's been like two weeks since I saw the last movie or maybe more so there could be some stuff but I didn't really like how, I mean, I'm, you know, 14, 14 years late to the game here, but it did kind of feel like a money grab. Uh, you know, I feel like the people at Warner Brothers were like, all right, this is it. This is the last one. How can we squeeze a couple extra million dollars out of this Harry Potter deal? Let's just turn the last book into two movies. <laughs> and so because of that, like I said, it did kind of feel like it dragged a little bit, but the flip side is it felt very true to the book, and I feel like we got a lot more detail that some of the other movies couldn't have had because, you know, they were just regular two-hour-long movies versus five, five and a half hours of content for Deathly Hallows. So, bittersweet for sure, kind of felt like a money grab, which kind of turned me off, but at the same time, of course, it's Harry Potter, so you can't not like it. But overall, I would say that the Harry Potter series is, without a doubt, the best series that I've ever read. Um, and I know that's partly like legacy, just because how could it not be? And also, just genuinely, like the characters, the world. I've never experienced any world like Hogwarts, like the world of Harry Potter. Um, obviously, Hogwarts isn't the name of the world. I know that. It's the name of the school. But I just mean like... Hogwarts in and of itself is like a whole world, but then, of course, there's more than that. There's the ministry. There's part of the real world as well. There's just a lot of really in-depth world building that is so extensive, much more extensive than anything I've ever read out there. There probably are some other series that rival it in detail and depth and all that stuff, but I've not read those yet. And, of course, Harry Potter is... I mean, part of the fun, I think, part of the appeal of the story is just seeing this person grow up. We meet him when he's like, I don't even remember, 11, I think, in the first book. And we see him all the way through, you know, the epilogue of Deathly Hallows. He's like 35. So, you know, we get to see this person grow up. And obviously, there's a lot of blank space in between, like, end of the book versus the epilogue but you know still we get to see this person develop and mature and grow and basically build their life through the course of these seven books which is unlike anything probably that I've ever read for sure and then I guess also when I started this series when I read the first book right, right before I read the first book I was kind of worried that I was going to be reading kids books which you know, it's neither here nor there. I don't mind reading a kid's book. A good story is a good story. But I was definitely prepared for like elementary slash middle school level type stories. Very simple, very, you know, I don't know, whatever. Just like a kid's story, right? But that was really not it at all. The characters obviously are kids, except for the teachers. Uh, but the story felt very, not mature, but like very sophisticated I guess uh for I guess what started out as a middle grade series probably ended as a middle grade series too but it just yeah did not feel like a kid's book really at any point when I was reading through it which I was very impressed by and I thought was really cool so anyway all that to say if you have not read Harry Potter uh I definitely would if you're watching this video, you probably have already read it. You're probably watching this video for nostalgia, or maybe you're rereading the series, or I don't know. I don't know why you, you might be watching this video other than those reasons, but I'm grateful that you are, and I appreciate it, whatever brought you here. But if you haven't read it, I cannot recommend it highly enough. It was such a touching, fun, incredible story where it was just pure escapism for sure, to just dive into the world of Harry Potter, leave this boring world that we live in every day, and just experience some magic, you know? 
But let me know in the comments below your thoughts on Deathly Hallows or just the entire series in general. What does Harry Potter mean for you? As someone who is just now finishing reading Harry Potter for the very first time, I feel like I'm just appreciating it for the great story that it is. I really don't have a ton of nostalgia for the story. It doesn't really mean anything to my childhood or anything like that. But I know if you grew up with it, it's got to be like part of your DNA or something like <laughs> core memories of your childhood, I'm sure. So just let me know your thoughts on the entire series in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. But as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.